Hi everybody, welcome back uh, to IndyCar on Sunday the 6th of October. Uh, it's been another one of those strange weeks where weird things have been happening. I've been receiving reports um, from many different uh, independence activists and bloggers and, and basically just people I know online saying their accounts on Facebook have been suspended or blocked or they have been put in Facebook jail and banned from posting or replying to posts or commenting on posts or sharing posts um, until uh, October the 10th. Now, I don't know why October the 10th is so sort of strategically important to Facebook, but I'd be falling victim to this as well. There is a mass attack going on at the moment um, on the ranks of the independence movement online. This is a coordinated attack, I think, because there are too many people reporting the same symptoms, being banned for no reason, Facebook saying that um, they will not allow them to post or they're temporarily prohibited from posting or some other blame excuse. And you can never find out what it is that you're supposed to have done wrong. I've sent now uh, five different emails of varying degrees of um, anger and profanity to the, the moderators at Facebook to ask them what the hell they think they're, they're doing and what we're supposed to be accused of doing. However, never we can never find out because um, the unionist trolls who are doing this are obviously making some kind of complaint to Facebook about the content or the delivery or you know your face just doesn't look right. Something online to get you banned. And this is the new tactic. They can no longer beat you with an argument. They can't troll your pages successfully because they keep getting thrown out. So now the tactic is to make um, baseless accusations against people who are trying to relay the news. And I don't know who's been making the accusations. I don't know what they are. I don't know who they are. And Facebook won't tell me who the accusers are, or what I'm being accused of having done. But all I do know is that I'm not the only one. Um, countless other people that I know online who are regular Facebook bloggers, independence bloggers, people who share uh, my stuff and other people's stuff regularly, have all been shut down in exactly the same way. So this is a coordinated attack. This is why, um, I mean... I mentioned Gandhi's words the other week there about first they laugh at you, um, no, what was it, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. We've got through the being ignored, the being laughed at, now we've got to the fighting part where they're trying to fight us and they have run out of weapons and the only weapon they now have is anonymous complaints. Uh, about us that are baseless but if they get enough complaints into Facebook it looks like something terrible is being done um, on your page they shut you down while they investigate so that's where I'm at at the moment with some of the, the um, activity on my pages I'm just hoping that enough of you are going to see this that you can get the word out to say that we are being shut down we're being closed down we're being censored we are having our freedom of speech removed by Facebook on the whim of a bunch of union flag waving loonies who might have been hanging around um, outside uh, the festival fringe office in Edinburgh yesterday. Now, mentioning Edinburgh brings me to the next point. Nothing very much is happening on Brexit at the moment. We all know that. And uh, probably nothing much is going to happen until middle of this month when the European Union has to make some kind of decision. Uh, and Boris's uh, rather weird uh, concoction that this dog's dinner that he's put together for Northern Ireland um, is going to be considered as the basis for some kind of negotiation. I can't see it going anywhere though because no matter which way you look at Boris's uh, plans they all end up in dead ends because just about everything that he said in there is going to piss off someone. If it's not the EU, it'll piss off the, the people in Ireland, it'll piss off the people in Scotland. It's just generally going to annoy the hell out of everyone, and nobody really is going to like it. But yet, despite that, the, the British government is going ahead and approaching members of the opposition party in Parliament to see if they will support this deal and actually vote it through. Uh, absolutely outstanding piece of delusional behaviour that anybody could believe that the opposition parties would support this half-baked mess that uh, Boris Johnson has created to try uh, to stitch the UK back together again while he tries to drag everybody out with them in these Brexit plans. I don't think it's going to happen. But anyway, as I said, I don't want to make this about Brexit. It's far more important now to concentrate on independence and yesterday proved, if it needed proving, that 
Hundreds of thousands of people are prepared to give up their weekend and travel to our capital city to march down the main streets and demonstrate that they want independence, to demand their independence. And there is now, it, it's no longer a desperation, it's no longer just a hope. It's not hope over fear anymore. There is the expectation building now. There is now a confidence and an expectation of success. We no longer are hoping for independence, we're demanding it and we're going to make it happen. And we have now got to convince one or two of our next door neighbours or friends at work uh, to join us in this campaign to get free from the mess that the British government is making of our overseas trade and our relationships with 27 other countries are being poisoned by the British government at the moment. And the first, in fact, the first casualty has already fallen, and that is the whisky industry is being targeted by Donald Trump in his anti-European trade war. Now, Donald Trump is starting trade wars with a lot of people at the moment, uh, including the European Union and China, his major trading competitors. And it's a very deliberate act by Trump, and it's part of his modus operandi to try and weaken the opposition before going back to them to try and create some kind of deal which advantages him or advantages the US. Either way, Scotland is being hit by this at the same time. It's a, a blunderbuss being used basically by Trump and one of the casualties of it, the collateral damage, is the whisky industry with a 25% surcharge on all Scottish goods being exported to America. That includes food incidentally and whisky and perhaps gin and any other things that we make that get exported over there. So where does it leave us? Well, as I said, we have now got to a point where I think we've got to what's known as critical mass with the movement. Critical mass is where a certain percentage of the population, the voting population, is prepared to give up a weekend and go out and demonstrate. And when you get to 3% of the working population, the chances of success double. We have now got it to the point where almost at 7% of the population are prepared to take to the streets. So you can multiply that again by two, so there's four times the chance of success of, say, a violent um, coup. If we took to the streets with, you know, petrol bombs and things like that, our chances of success would be zero. So we don't do that. But a peaceful protest with family, with children, with dogs, with people in wheelchairs, everybody wants that. The carnival atmosphere. How do you resist that? How do the police clamp down on people and children? How do they manage to stop uh, a movement which is made up of entire families. They can't. And Gandhi is right. And John Lennon is right. Um, they might, as Lennon said, you know, pull your beard and flick your face and try to get you to fight. But if you are peaceful and non-violent and you reply with humour, they can't deal with it. They can't deal with it and the movement keeps growing. And that's what's happened. We've reached 200,000 on the streets now. IndyCar's figures, incidentally, which has been massaged downwards massively over the last six months, from over 260,000 back in July, Facebook chopped away a whole, oh, I don't know, something like about 100,000 of my viewers uh, from the figures and, and brought it down to somewhere like 150,000. I built it back up again, and it's now back up at over 203,000, which means probably that we're somewhere in the region of a quarter of a million viewers for this tiny little blog, okay, this video blog. Facebook is terrified at the moment. They're terrified of the British government. They're terrified of being regulated. They are trying at the moment to allow the British government to do what it's doing to me and other people. In other words, letting the British government and its spooks and its paid trolls try to shut us down with organised mass complaints against various sites. I've already had to move pages twice, as you know. And IndyCar, this new page that I'm on at the moment, might have to change again if they try this again. But the fact that these things are happening, the fact that we've reached critical mass, and the fact that this nasty uh, behaviour is happening online tells you one thing, and that is that we're winning. And we're going to keep winning, and the tactics are going to get more and more drastic online. I don't know what they'll do next, but they'll, they'll keep trying to shut us down. But it's important that we keep marching. All Under One Banner needs to get even bigger now. We need 200,000 people on the streets of Edinburgh and maybe two or 300,000 people on the streets of Glasgow, 100,000 people in Dundee, you know, 90,000 in uh, Inverness. 
as many people as we can get on the streets of every single city. And we want to drive the Tories out of Scotland as well, the, 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 the dirty dozen that still remain, and that uh, monster Alistair Jack who pretends to be Scottish and pretends to be the Secretary of State. But he's really the Viceroy of the colony of Scotland, and he will be turfed out as well in the, in the great clear-out that will follow shortly. We don't know when the independence vote is going to be, but there will be one. And regardless of whatever Boris Johnson tries to do uh, with Brexit, or trying to shut down our parliament, or trying to silence us in other ways, he will not succeed. Trying to stop Brexit uh, is basically like trying to push jelly into, into a quilt cover. You know, you press it down in one place, it comes out somewhere else. You cannot keep independence pinned down. You cannot keep people's ambitions and their hopes uh, down. You can't keep people from having the freedom that they deserve and is their human right. Okay, the, Our human right to self-determination is written into the Charter of the UN. United Nations guarantees that every nation on the planet has the right to self-determination and we are a nation. We are in a union with England, not with the United Kingdom. Scotland and England together make up the United Kingdom. But we are in a union and we don't want to be in it anymore because the union is taking us in a direction which will harm the country for decades, perhaps for the next century. And we don't want that. Scotland has spent 35 years or more rebuilding itself after the carnage of the Thatcher years destroyed our industries. We've now got industries exporting all over the world, cutting edge technology. We have the best green technology in the planet at the moment for manufacturing energy. We're still awash with oil. We could probably sell all of our oil interests off and use that money to completely reconfigure and rebuild the country if we could break away from the Union. And this is what we now have to do. We're nearly, nearly there. But everybody needs to keep recruiting more friends and keep marching. Don't stop marching. Marching is a demonstration to other people who know you that you want a change. And when they see so many people coming out, they'll begin to think, the balance has shifted the other way now. If I stay on the Union side of the fence, I'm going to lose. And people will start to migrate over to our side when they see the sense of the arguments. And the sense of the arguments compared to Brexit, well, you know what it is. It's a no-brainer. So we're getting there. I just wanted to say to everybody today that yesterday's march was a high-water mark, but it's not the only one. All right, we've set a new record in Edinburgh. Let's keep setting new records. I would love to see two million people out on the streets of Scotland. Two million people who are prepared to vote yes is a majority, all right? It's a majority because it would be virtually impossible for the unionist side to compete with that. They managed supposedly 2.2 uh, million last time, if I remember my figures correctly. That's how they won. We, we got, I think it was 100, 1, 1 million and 65,000 or something like that. Um, we were 45%, they were 55, allegedly. Nobody really believes that. By the time the, the 600,000 or more postal votes had been manoeuvred around and changed and stuffed and interfered with by the Tories, we have no idea of knowing whether uh, we would have won by 1% or not. But this time, we will, because the support which grudgingly um, Sir Professor Curtis said last night that uh, there was now looking like there was a, an appetite for independence in Scotland. He was still saying that it was only 49% of the people in Scotland for independence. What a load of baloney that is. They cannot bring themselves to print the real figure. It sticks at 49% every single time. It's the glass ceiling of the United Kingdom polling system. You cannot break through 50% if you're a Scot, right? If it's a Scottish poll, you never get more than 50% because the British government will not allow the population to know the real amount of people who are actually wanting independence. And we know from the average of Scottish-based newspaper polls that that figure is somewhere between 70 and 80% of the population now want independence. And this is polls conducted in Scotland in Scottish daily newspapers. And this is talking about maybe eight separate polls and averaging them all out. The lowest figure, I think, 
uh, was 52% for independence. The highest figure was 86. Somewhere in there, in between those two extremes, lies the truth. And my guess is that we're at about 69%, something like that, approaching 70%. But the British government cannot put that out, and the British media will never put that out. So, be optimistic. Remember, we're not just uh, marching in hope anymore. We expect independence, we deserve it, and the expectation is building across the country. Everybody now knows it's coming, everybody now knows it's going to happen, that there is a huge tilting of the seesaw of public opinion away from Brexit, away from the dangers associated with this reckless leaving of the European Union, leaving us with nobody to trade with. Everybody is running from that side of the ship to the lifeboat of independence on the other side. So as the, the HMS Britannia slowly sinks below the waves of Brexit, we will be in the luxury lifeboat heading back to Europe, ready to do business as we currently do, but armed with 12 times the income that we currently have in revenues. 12 times as wealthy as we are now. Who would not want their country to be 12 times wealthier? I ask you. But that's the reality. When we're independent, we are 12 times wealthier as a nation than we are at the present. We could, we could completely eradicate poverty in this country. We could bring everybody out of these uh, sink estates and council estates. We could find work for everybody. We could train everybody. We could have the best health service on the planet. We could have anything we wanted. We could build any country we wanted, but we can't do it when we're locked into a death grip with this um, zombie nation that the United Kingdom now is. It's time for us to go. And everybody knows it, and everybody now feels it. So keep marching. Let's see if we can get two million people on the streets in the next few months. That would be fantastic. Imagine that. Get the whole majority of voters on their feet, on the streets at the one time. I don't know if it can be done, but certainly I think if you can get 200,000 people in one city, you can probably get half a million people in two cities, and that would be incredible. I'll see you all later. Have a great Sunday. Bye-bye for now.